vocabulary came about when there was nothing commercially available to meet the needs of one student. And I'm going to share a little bit of that. My goal is to, whoop, let's see, I just got a new keyboard here. Oh, that's not it. There we go. So the purpose is, um, I wanted to introduce you to this, this, new cons this new construct called semantic reasoning. It is a combination of vocabulary and critical thinking. Um, and it was the thing I stumbled up upon when I was working with an eighth grade girl. And uh, you're going to learn some resources for creating your own semantic reasoning lessons. Um, this is, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Infocabulary. We are giving away a two month free um, subscription, full access to everything during this time. Um, but really what Dina and I do is, uh, you know, when we do presentations, it's really to teach people about this new construct to add this. So English language arts teachers, speech language pathologists, reading, um, you know, reading tutors. There's really kind of anyone who's working on and trying to improve literacy as well as those who are working on, you know, even in the STEM and the uh, academic areas, vocabulary is just hugely important. And we're going to go into that. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the importance of vocabulary, how we typically learn it, and then why something like semantic reasoning could really round out um, and be added to the toolboxes that you're already using with students. Um, so you'll also learn the multiple uses of our tool in vocabulary with K-12 students. Um, and so that's, you know, ages seven, which is when age of reasoning kicks in. Um, we don't recommend using in vocabulary or semantic reasoning with students younger than the age of seven, unless it's in a highly um, adult um, directed activity just because of that requirement of, of critical thinking in order to learn vocabulary with this method. Uh, and then also how can you adapt it for online learning. So I, uh, I pulled this talk, we, have, we just did a, a webinar last week uh, for specialists for reading, you know, reading specialists, speech language pathologists. And then the week before that, we did one for classroom teachers and, you know, English language arts teachers. So I pulled a lot of this talk from that. I'm not going to show, um, I did a 14 minute TEDx talk last year. Uh, we, I got it down to about five minutes, you know, the, the, the highlights, um, but I'm not going to spend the time going over that. I, I want to actually do a live demo with you. Um, but the key points from this were that I was working with an eighth grade girl named Panina. And uh, this isn't her real picture, but I do have permission to use her name. So, um, so she was in eighth grade and she was reading Animal Farm. She had a diagnosis of dyslexia, has a diagnosis of dyslexia. So she had not been um, a fan of reading. She hadn't been encountering um, lots of vocabulary uh, through reading. So orally, we tend to, I, my guess is most of the people uh, watching this or participating in this have um, sophisticated vocabularies. Uh, and typically that's from being avid readers. So we don't tend to use um, the level of oral uh, expressive vocabulary in our conversations tends to be much lower than what we actually know, which is why when we read something that's more complex, um, if we have that depth of vocabulary knowledge, we can actually navigate and comprehend. Uh, so one of the huge issues that she was struggling was she could not comprehend at all what was going on in Animal Farm. And, and there's, um, by, by um, um, Orwell. So she, there were a bunch of reasons, but the primary one that was slapping me in the face was that her, her lack of, I mean, we were stopping every third or fourth word because there was a vocabulary word she didn't know. And um, this was the vocabulary. Uh, so her English teacher had given her, you know, the kind of quintessential 20 vocabulary words, memorize them, use your rote memorization skill, and then Friday we're going to take the quiz and you're gonna do great if you're a good rote memorizer and, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you really understood the words. So this was her, um, de this was her uh, definition that she had for prudent. And this is the participation uh, part. If you've had a chance to read the, the index card. What do you think she told me that prudent meant after reading this definition? Anyway, you can jump in if you've got mute, if you've got audio on. So if you guessed that she thought that prudent meant not drunk, 
bingo, because she knew the word sober and it was the last one. And hello, this is, you know, a seventh grade vocabulary word that's being defined using 10th and 11th grade vocabulary words. It's very, very common. Um, so that was when I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, and I had this epiphany when I pulled up her report and I was like, oh my gosh, how did I forget this? This is a girl whose nonverbal skills were in the genius range and her verbal skills were much lower than that. And I was, and it was this, that moment of why, and yes, I was using, we were acting words out and she was drawing an example. You know, we would talk about examples and, you know, I, I had deep, you know, deep dived, deep divin, deep dived on um, helping her really understand um, the, these vocabulary words. And then she would draw a single picture, which is one of the recommendations that, that, you know, for best practice vocabulary instruction. The problem is she then would anchor her understanding on a single image. And then she, you know, basically told me that prominent meant short. Um, because of that one example. And so um, it's a great idea to um, add imagery and, and add activity. But I, the epiphany I had was that I was still relying a lot on using language to teach language. And 65% of the kids in this country struggle in some way with language as, as that's the, the number of students who cannot pass the literacy assessment. You know, they can't, they can't demonstrate comprehension in reading testing. Um, and so part of the TEDx talk is, you know, uh, just like Janet, I'm a speech language pathologist, my training, my like everything about my way of thinking was targeted at the 10% of students ish who are diagnosed or on an IEP or, or have a learning issue. And then it wasn't until I built a product and built a company and learned the, you know, kind of market, market research. That's when I realized, oh my gosh, this is a much, much broader uh, problem. And there are so many students who are struggling with comprehension. And there are many reasons potentially for that. Um, background knowledge, um, difficulty with being able to create a visual image um, as they're reading, um, and, and vocabulary and grammar. There's a bunch of different reasons. So we started with kind of this first place, which was let's get kids familiar with vocabulary words. So really quickly, the difference um, between when we talk about vocabulary, it's important to talk about like, what are you talking about? Well, like what aspects of vocabulary? So breadth of vocabulary is um, a very simple task would be to look at four pictures and then I would say, you know, maybe it's a unicycle, a bicycle, a tricycle and a car. And I would say point to the bicycle and you would point to the right picture. You didn't have to say anything. You didn't have to define it. You didn't have to deeply understand it. You just had to sort of kind of recognize it enough. And that is, um, that's more what we're looking at is like familiarity with, with words, sort of kind of knowing what they mean. Um, and that is, there was some research that looked at um, children before they started school. And when those, when kids at that young age struggled with that kind of a task, those were children who they tracked them over time. And those were children who ended up being the ones who, um, a lot of them struggled with the decoding, being able to figure out, you know, the sound symbol cor correlation between the, you know, the, the rules of print. And then depth of vocabulary, this is more, you know, with the word compass, for example, knowing that it is a device, knowing that it's related to camping and navigation, that it has a magnet in it and that it has a compass rose, north, south, east, west. Um, it has a needle in it, the different parts. So, the, so knowing deeply about a word and then having the neurological underpinnings to put that word into a specific place so that it's highly connected with other words. That's what we're talking about with depth of vocabulary. And the early research before kiddos come into school for that is that the kiddos who struggle with that skill are the ones who end up having comprehension issues. Um, we've, we've done a lot of presentations on, on this, you know, that go a little bit more in depth. So if it's something you're curious about, um, uh, there'll be I'll, I have a slide at the end that talks about where you can find some, some PowerPoint presentations that we have available. So semantic reasoning was this thing um, that I did with my student Panina. So I had been tr using language and, and just taking a, a long time to get even a few words in um, with the goal of helping her pass her, you know, like that's when you're working with older students, it's like their motivation is to pass their test. And I'm not a tutor, I'm a speech language pathologist. So you have to go at their, at their pace, right? Um, and so I'm like, we have so, it, it's massive, the amount of vocabulary. This gap was so huge for her. 
there had to be a better way. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh, she's got this critical thinking ability. Her visual skills are amazing. So I went online and the word was had been prominent. And I went online and I found, you know, with my very good depth of understanding of that word, because I've been alive a long time, I'm an avid reader, um, I was able to pull visual images um, and put them on a single PowerPoint. And I, the next time I saw her, just had the word prominent at the top, showed her all those images, and literally in six seconds, she goes, the, the definition before was prominent meant short. It's totally wrong con concept for that. Um, and here she goes, oh, prominent means to stand out in some way. And I had shown her like a, a famous person, uh, a powerful person, a uh, big home with smaller homes near it, um, someone who had a really green eye, a tall evergreen tree in a deciduous forest, you know, during fall. Um, and so she was able to kind of like quickly see the common thread among those visual examples and then come to the right conclusion about what that word meant. And instead of her having to encounter, so kind of the process is that you're, you're reading the prudent student studied for his test. Um, and then the next time you encounter that word prudent, it's, you're not likely to hear it from orally, right? From, from just casual conversation. But then the next time, and so the, the brain anchors down on, oh, the prudent student studied for his test. This is probably, you know, storage wise, this is probably a school related word. And it means smart. Uh, or the, the, you know, and then the next time you encounter it in a different text, probably, is she pr prudently chose the health, the healthy food. Um, and so it's over time and over you, over getting those exposures that you get that depth of understanding and it's constantly being tweaked as you get new examples. So this is what we're kind of hoping is happening, um, is that, you know, I'm, you know, the, the student, um, if, if the visualization skills are intact and that's not the case for everyone but it's the case for many many um, and so we're hoping that there's this this active engagement with the text and then and now you've got visual examples to use for your next time you're encountering and, and reading um, and that's what we're hoping you know active engagement pulling up your background knowledge having some data so that when you're reading you're you're kind of making that movie in your mind and so um, that led to lots and lots of PowerPoint presentations for all of her vocabulary. And then um, I'm not going to go into the details of how it all happened, but um, we ended up publishing a, the, only, the only test that looks at depth of vocabulary knowledge without taxing students' expressive language. So um, all of the other tasks that look at depth of understanding, I would read report after report where you know, the student would be tested by a psychologist, um, oftentimes for a, a thorough um, workup of their, their skills. Um, and then the conclusion would be that their vocabulary was poor. And I always really like, or their expressive language skills, um, they're not able to put a definition together because that's just linguistically and organizationally one of the hardest language tasks we can ask a student to do. So I was never satisfied that I was actually getting a test that was looking at their depth of vocabulary knowledge because the modality was that they had to use a lot of sophisticated expressive language. So test of semantic reasoning was kind of early on in our journey. We developed in vocabulary for iPad only um, at first, and then we developed the test of semantic reasoning. Um, and then we Raised, raised funds and, and have created this web-based version for K-12. So I'm just gonna quickly show the, the screenshots from that and then I'm gonna go do, check my time, uh, and then I'm gonna do, go do a quick um, demo for you. And then I do wanna talk about, um, like I said, we are giving this away for free now um, for, you know, for two months. Um, it is an inexpensive, it is an inexpensive tool um, that we, you know, parents can purchase it, uh, speech language pathologists, tutors, um, as well as um, independent schools, public schools and districts. So we have different kind of like user interfaces for that. But this, it's the, the concept is it's a mountain climbing theme. So there's just enough gamification in it to keep kids motivated uh, to get up mountains. But actually what we hear from teachers um, and students is that they actually like the word work. The word work is fun because they're trying, you're solving a problem. Um, so this is kind of the, the, what it looks like. 
And this is uh, the base camp mode. Uh, so when there are three activity types on the mountain, getting up the mountain, the first one is the learning mode, the base camp mode. So this is six images um, and we've, our team has carefully pulled as many visual examples. Um, and then as you'll see in the live demo, um, they also come with captions that are recorded. So everything on our device, on our tool is audio, um, is, uh, audio is paired with the visual as well to help kids. And that's kids, you know, students can turn that on or off or the teacher can decide. Um, but basically the idea being, what does this first example have in common with the second example? Well, nothing, she's drinking water and she's studying. Oh, and then here's somebody else who's studying and then he's using it. So the, the whole point being like, as you're going through, like what's the common thread and then be able to pull back and go oh the common thread is and maybe some of them you can do just visually others require um, the caption so you can see i have highlighted one here searching after it exercise is smart she's making the a wise choice to choose the the vegetables over the donuts and that kind of thing so it's using synonyms and phrases that are also using kid-friendly language um, in order to give them the construct that they need both visually exemplars and then also the language as well and then this is very very similar to our test of semantic reasoning this is the ascent mode in in vocabulary so there are four images um, and then there are four words from which to choose the the one word that goes with all four so um, here she's putting on sunscreen that's smart all of them are doing the the wise or the smart or the prudent thing uh, and then expedition is uh, we just released 2.0 uh, um, just about a month and a half, just as COVID happened. So, um, <laughs> excuse me. So this is a, an extension activity that looks at um, how well students are able to, to match, not just synonyms, but, but related words. And so the, word, the two words that would go here um, would be train and caravan. So um, we do have a wide variety of YouTube, um, YouTube videos. Uh, and we do have for, for the 2.0 teacher experience, we did just put that up on our YouTube. You would just search for in vocabulary teacher how to videos and there's all of this kind of information. What's the student experience like? What's, what is my teacher dashboard? How do I choose words for my students? Um, and then also implementing it with a group. So I'm going to go over. Um, I have this, I wanted to, I want to make sure that we get a chance to talk about this. So um, this is uh, just in case we don't get a lot of time. I just wanted to make sure that you see this. This is for creating your own lessons. If you wanted to go do all the work that we did for you. <laughs> um, and some people do and sometimes we don't have every single word in the English language on our system yet, you know. Um, and so if you want to learn how to do it, um, workbench uh, dot com. You do have to create a, an, an account, but Workbench was acquired by Google. It is completely free and it's a wealth. I want to check in with everybody afterwards, but it's, they have a wealth of um, engaging activities that te teacher lessons. And so we created one on how to do a semantic reasoning lesson. So, you know, here's how to find which words you want to focus on. And so we do, we focus on tier two uh, and academic words in, in, in vocabulary. Those are the words that are really the glue words that are keeping, um, you know, the tier two words are the glue words that are keeping the, the academic texts together. And they're also those words that add nuanced um, uh, understanding and, and the ability to communicate nuanced um, thoughts um, in in your communication. So anyway, there are step. There's a step by step process here, um, telling you exactly how on our end what we do to create in vocabulary lessons. Um, so I'm going to leave that open in case we have time. This is our website. It's infocabulary.com. And as you can see, there's a two month free access. Um, if you go in as a teacher, our goal was to get schools um, schools um, give them tools that they were gonna need for the online. Um, but we are also offering it for free for parents and for an individual tutor or uh, you know, a, a private practice. Um, you, those two do have to enter a credit card just so that we can keep in touch with you and keep your data and that kind of thing. But there's no, um, there's no charge. Um, and you get, a, you get a message that, um, hey, it's almost time to renew. Do you want to um, before we would ever do that? So um, that's our website. We've got a lot. This is where you can go to get a lot more information. Um, 
you know, we've got um, research, published research on infocabulary showing statistically very significant difference when kids used infocabulary compared to business as usual. And that's all housed right here under the learn more. All right, so I'm going to go over here to, um, so if I just uh, go to the demo, you completed your first it's showing, you know, what it looks like if you're you know, halfway up the mountain. Um, the concept being that students for each segment can earn up to three stars, um, but they can still move forward if they, as long as they get at least one star. Uh, and there are the three different um, activity types that I shared with you. Um, and this one is base camp. Hang on, I think I already have it. Yeah. Compliant. <coughs> Okay, so um, exposed is the word. Everything is audio supported. Exposed. Uh, and then um, you would theoretically, it just depends on how you wanna use it. We have schools where they just have the students using it independently. If you are in more of a therapeutic one-on-one -on -one or small group, um, there's lots and lots of differentiation when we get to the teacher side of things, uh, which, um, you can toggle back and forth here in the demo between what the student is seeing uh, and what the teacher is seeing. The, our student demo is, these are fifth and sixth grade vocabulary words, um, but like I said, in the teacher mode, you have access to the most basic words. We do have some tier one words in here because we have a lot of English language learners, um, and then all the way up to punctilious and odiferous and those kinds of vocabulary words. Um, so the goal is that you're going to build the definition, um, but the captions- the, paper ripped. the page behind it was made visible. So, or like if I'm working with a student, I'm saying, oh, what are the key words? And you can, with annotation, I do a lot of online therapy as well. So, you know, with the annotation tools, kids can underline the keywords or they can repeat the keywords that are helping them get to the, the concept. She didn't know what was in the present, but so now it can be seen. You can get, you get the point there. Um, so I'm gonna actually stop that, um, stop on the student side and then go over to the teacher side. And then I'm gonna stop for uh, questions because I'm new Noticing the time. So this is the teacher dashboard. I have all of my students. There's lots of data. There's lots of um, information. If I click on Emily, for example, here's her activity report. Um, these are the most recent words that she's mastered. These are the ones she's learned. And um, get in touch with me if you want more information about um, what, like, what, we're, what we say, what, what we mean when we say that. Um, and then I can very detailed information, how many seconds, um, you know, how, how much time, how, my, how many um, times they clicked on an image to get some more help. Um, and then this is the fun part, <laughs> the word list. So here, if you are teaching, let's say you're an English teacher and you are teaching um, like the, the giver, and this is, um, sorry, I know we've got a lot of um, European folks on. Um, it, is, it is pretty US centric in terms of the literature, although we do have Romeo and Juliet, we do have um, Shakespeare, the, the Bard. So um, uh, as, we gr as we're growing, we're adding more and more um, text. But here you can see that we have 189 vocabulary words that we've tagged with our background as literacy and speech language pathology experts. Um, we've pulled out those tier two um, kinds of words um, and they're attributable by chapter. So if I want to assign maybe um, before we even start reading the first three chapters of The Giver, um, here are 42 words in the system, reassured, um, appropriate. And then as you can see, they're just getting more and more com complex as, as we go up. This is the grade level of the vocabulary word. So then I can just start all of those words Okay, I'm gonna start all of those words. And now when my students log in independently, they are going to encounter those words as a priority above and beyond when I rostered them in as a sixth grader, for example. If I do nothing on my teacher dashboard, they will just encounter sixth grade vocabulary words and use critical thinking in order to infer those, the words of those meanings. Um, but I have a lot of ability to differentiate. Um, I can differentiate for my kiddos who have anxiety or processing disorders. I can remove the, the time feature, any of the timing features. I can require them to click on all of the pictures if I want to. So I think I've talked a lot and I'm really excited to <laughs> hear from you all. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen.